Netflix is obviously super popular, becomes more and more popular every day. And if you wanna know the best ways that you can get the most out of your Netflix subscription, this is the video you're gonna to wanna to see. What's going on tech squad? Andrew Edwards here, editor in chief of gearlive.com. This channel is all about tech, gadgets, and gaming. So if it's your first time here, be sure to hit that subscribe button. If you're fans of those things down below, so you can stay up to date on this channel and hit that notification bell icon so you don't miss a future video. Now today, as I said, we are talking about Netflix and getting the most bang for your buck for your Netflix subscription. You're probably paying around $10 a month for Netflix. And I wanna help you stretch that dollar. A lot of times, at least for me, I'll sit down, I'll pull Netflix up, and I'll start scrolling through, looking for something to watch, unable to find exactly what I'm in the mood for. So for some of you, it may feel like you have a Netflix subscription, but you never know what to watch. So in this video, I've got 15 tips. 15 ways that you can get the most out of your Netflix subscription. Let's jump into it right now. Now, first on my list is for people who haven't tried Netflix yet. And there are people like this out there. In fact, a couple of weeks ago, I was talking to someone and I mentioned to them this show that was on Netflix and I said, you have Netflix, right? I don't know, I don't even know why I asked that question because I just assume everyone does. And they said, no. And like, I was, I even did I didn't even know what to say at that. I didn't even know what words should come out of my mouth next. It was so weird to talk to someone who said, no, I do not use, I've never had a Netflix subscription. So if that's you though, if you're one of those people who doesn't have a Netflix subscription, you can get a one month Netflix free trial right now. Just go to netflix.com and you'll see, they probably offer it right there. It's either gonna be a two week free trial or a one month free trial. They, they usually go between those and offering them. So I'll leave links to everything down in the description below. If you wanna try out Netflix for yourself, just grab a free trial, super easy. Next tip, this one is pretty big. There are secret Netflix categories that you can't access unless you know the secret code. So here's what I mean. If you're looking for something specific or you're looking for a specific genre, something that's more dialed in than a, you know, a huge genre like comedy, you can actually go to a web browser and type in a Netflix URL and add a code at the end to tap into their secret category. So for example, let me read some of these to you. So you go to your web browser and you type in netflix.com slash browse slash genre slash, and then you put in a code. So for example, slash 5505 is the secret code for psychological thrillers. So anything that Netflix has categorized as being a psychological thriller, you can access all of them using that URL. And you can only do this from a web browser. You can't do this on a smart TV or a tablet or in an app. You have to do it from a web browser. Now, if you swap out 5505 and instead you put in 4922, that's satires. Or if you use 26, that's mockumentaries. And then there are a ton of really specific ones, like if you put in slash 75930, that's werewolf horror movies. So if you ever find yourself in the mood for werewolf horror movies, you just put in that code at the end of that URL and it'll show you everything that Netflix has that's categorized as a werewolf horror movie. Or 4961 is dramas based on books. So if you, if you love reading or you just wanna watch dramas that are based on books, there you go. Easy way to access that stuff. Now there are over 100 of these secret codes. I'm leaving every single one of these down in the description below. So if you wanna take a look at the full list to unlock basically the Netflix catalog, hit the description down below and use that secret tip to find exactly what you're looking for. Next up is Netflix profiles. In case you didn't know, Netflix now allows you to have up to five different profiles on your Netflix account. And a profile basically means five different sets of recommendations and five different rules if you wanna set those up as well. So for example, you can have a Netflix profile and your roommate can have a Netflix profile or your kids can have a Netflix profile or each of your kids individually can have a Netflix profile or your spouse. And so what that means for you is all of your Netflix recommendations when you launch Netflix and you go into your profile, those are gonna be tailored to your likes and your dislikes. So rather than having a family or a group account where everyone is watching stuff, so you, have, you got your kids watching Dora the Explorer and SpongeBob, you pull up Netflix in the evening after a hard day of work and all you're seeing are Disney animated movies, that's not the best. So instead you give your kids an account and all their preferences will be on that account 
your preferences will be on your account, your spouse, your roommate, etc. Everyone can have their own account and their own preferences, making it super easy to make Netflix work for you. Next up on my list of ways to make your Netflix experience even better is actually an external website called What's On Netflix. Every month, Netflix is adding and removing content. They're adding and removing shows, or adding and removing originals, or adding and removing movies, things like that. You never know unless you really pay attention every month what's being added and what's being taken away. What's on Netflix is an easy way to see at the beginning of each month or just at any time really because they're adding stuff all throughout the month what's been added and what's new. So it's a cool way to find out things that are on Netflix that aren't necessarily showing on your Netflix dashboard. Another cool place to go is the Netflix Best Of subreddit where Reddit members post their hidden gems and also some not so hidden gems, some pretty hyped up shows as well. But basically they're picked for what's good to watch on Netflix and you can go in and you can read the discussion as well to see why people liked it and also which people didn't like it. Just another way to get some good recommendations of what to watch on Netflix. By the way, if you're a fan of Netflix, you should also check out Plex. Big shout out to Plex. I'm a huge fan of Plex and I've been a long time user. If you're unaware, Plex is a service and an app. You can download it to an iPhone from the App Store or to an Android device from the Google Play Store. And it allows you to stream content stored on your home network. It's super simple to use, super simple to set up, and it's free. There is a paid version called the Plex Pass, and that gives you early access to new Plex features, lets you watch content offline, gives you mobile sync, cloud sync, and camera upload, and so much more. So be sure to check out Plex. I'll leave links down in the description below to the free download of Plex as well as the Plex Pass. All right, next up is a cool tool that I like. It's a Chrome extension, actually, so it only works in the Google Chrome web browser, and it's called N Enhancer. So the letter N and then the word enhancer, but all squished up into one word. And what N Enhancer does is when you're browsing Netflix, it actually adds in a couple of things. It adds in the Rotten Tomato score, it adds in the IMDB rating, and it adds in movie trailers for any movies that have them, which is pretty much every movie has a movie trailer, right? So while you're browsing Netflix, if you're unsure if something is good or not, you can see the IMDb rating, you can see the Rotten Tomatoes score, and you can also watch the movie trailer just to get a feel for that movie and see if it's something you want to spend your time on. Because one thing I hate is picking something on Netflix to watch and then like 10 minutes in feeling like I just wasted my time I'm not really enjoying this. Drop a comment below if you've been there. Next up on my list is Rotten Tomatoes Netflix section. So if you don't wanna use a Google Chrome extension or you don't use Google Chrome at all, but you still want something similar, you can go to RottenTomatoes.com and look at their Netflix section. Their Netflix streaming section will have ratings for everything that's available on Netflix. So just another way to find out if something is worth watching and what the critics and what fans think of these shows and movies. Next up on my list is Netflix Roulette. Sometimes you don't wanna to go to Rotten Tomatoes, you don't wanna watch movie trailers, you just wanna just see something random and have it play. That's what the Netflix Roulette website is all about. You just go in and you can just play roulette, you can have it spin for you, and it'll show you something randomly picked on Netflix, or you can put in some parameters, like I wanna watch a TV show, or I wanna watch a movie, or I like this director, and just show me something random and it'll show you something random. If you don't like it, you could just hit, hit spin, it'll show you something else random. Just another cool way to kind of surface stuff that you may not even know is on Netflix without doing too much work because again, it picks for you. All right, next up on my list, this is for all the binge watchers out there. A lot of people who binge watch shows like to do it with other people. So whether you have friends over or you have a roommate or you have your girlfriend, your boyfriend, husband, wife, Etc. Binge watching is huge, it's the way a lot of people consume TV nowadays. But sometimes the people you binge watch with have to leave town. They have to go on a business trip, they have to go on a family trip. You're basically separated for whatever reason it is, and then you have to not watch this. You can't binge cheat. You don't want to cheat on them by binging and continuing a show without them. I have a friend who did that. You know what I'm talking about, Eric. You did that to me with Breaking Bad. I'm still salty about it. And actually, I'm gonna tell you what happened there. We're watching Breaking Bad all together, right? We're watching like season four. It was like a week, we didn't see Eric, and he comes over to watch uh, the beginning of season four. Something he says made me realize he already saw episode one of season four. Something like, oh, watch this, this is a good part. Something like that. And then come to find out, he didn't just watch one episode of season four. This dude watched the whole season. He just watched the whole season four when we had watched everything else together. 
Not cool, Eric. So if you don't want to be that person, then you should check out Showgoers for Netflix. Showgoers for Netflix is pretty cool. It allows you to select a Netflix show and then invite other people to watch it with you at the same time. So it's all synced up no matter where they are. You can be in New York and they can be in California and you're all watching at the same time and then it also sets up a chat window. So if you wanna chat about the show or whatever, you can do that in the window and it's more than two people. You can have a bunch of people in there all watching the same show, all in the chat window, allowing you to keep on binging even when people are far away. Next up on my list is parental controls. This may be obvious to some, but a lot of people don't realize Netflix actually does have parental controls. So parents, you can create a profile like I mentioned earlier, give that profile to your kids and you can set the parameters for what they can watch on Netflix. There are four levels that Netflix has. They have little kids, older kids, teens, and adults. And whatever restriction you put on the account, they can watch anything at that level or below. Anything above that level that they try to watch, it'll require a four digit pin that you would have to input. So you can lock out content that you don't necessarily want them to watch. Next up is a service that helps you determine where to watch content. Have you ever been watching a show on Netflix or in the middle of a movie or just had something in your Netflix list that you wanted to see and then it was removed from Netflix? I hate when it happens, especially mid season of a show. The website where to watch is cool because you can go there, type in the name of that content, the show or the movie, and it'll tell you where else you can watch it. And sometimes I actually start there. If an old show or movie pops into my head, I'm like, oh, I wanna see that. I wonder if it's playing on any streaming service. Rather than going into Netflix and then going into Hulu and then going into Amazon, etc., you can go to where to watch, type in the name, and it'll tell you where you can watch that content if it's available online. They'll tell you where you can rent it or if it's available for streaming for free, etc. Where to watch is a really cool resource. All right, next up is the rating system. In case you didn't know, Netflix used to have a five-star rating system. Whenever you watch something or if you've already seen it before, you can go in and rate that content between one and five stars and Netflix would use that to recommend content to you in the future. What they found was the majority of people only used two of those five ratings, one star and five stars. Every now and then they may veer off, but for the most part, people would put in five stars or one star. And so they actually changed that recently. So they got rid of the five star rating system and instead now it's a thumbs up and a thumbs down. So whenever you watch a piece of content, make sure you go in and just give it a thumbs up or a thumbs down. Either you liked it or you didn't like it. And that's gonna help Netflix continue to recommend things that it thinks you'll enjoy based on your recommendation. If you liked all this stuff, you'll probably like this stuff too. And if you disliked all of this stuff, then we probably shouldn't show them this other stuff that they're probably not gonna like either. All right, next up on my list is a way to save money on Netflix. And that is through getting a standard definition plan. Most people don't know this. So Netflix is typically $9.99 a month. That gives you high definition streaming and streaming on up to two devices at one time. But if you don't care about the quality of your stream, if you don't care about high definition, and you just wanna save money, you can actually downgrade your plan. You can go into your plan and choose the standard definition plan. That's $7.99 a month instead of $9.99 a month. So you'll save yourself 20% off each and every month. Now you can only stream to one device at a time instead of two, but if that doesn't matter, if all you do is stream to let's just say a smartphone or a tablet to watch Netflix and you don't care about streaming to multiple devices at the same time, you can save yourself some money by switching to the standard definition plan. Alternatively, you can also spend more money on Netflix. My next tip is for people who have a higher definition display. Behind me, I have a 4K display that supports high dynamic range, HDR. Netflix is one of the streaming services that provides 4K streaming with high dynamic range content. If you have a TV like this, you may not realize that you're not getting that content though because it comes at an extra fee. So if you wanna be able to stream 4K HDR content, you go into your settings and you actually choose the Netflix premium streaming plan. And what that costs is $11.99 per month. So it's $2 more than the standard plan and that allows you to stream 4K HDR on available titles. And it also upgrades you from being able to stream on two devices at a time to streaming on up to four devices at one time. And next on my list is another way to save money. It's not gonna save you money on your Netflix plan, but it may save you money on your data plan. If you don't have an unlimited data plan and you watch a lot of Netflix on your smartphone on the go, you may be killing your data plan and you may be hesitant to even stream Netflix 
when you're out and about. But there's a setting, you can go into your Netflix account and change your playback setting. What that allows you to do is basically reduce the size of the stream coming from Netflix by about 90% depending on the setting you choose. So then when you're streaming, when you're on the go, you're using a lot less data and therefore avoiding those data overages. Again, if you have an unlimited plan, it probably won't affect you unless you start getting throttled, but it is something to consider. Keep using Netflix, but don't allow Netflix to start causing you to have to pay more to your telephone company. So there you have it guys, those were your 14 tips to get the most out of your Netflix subscription, save a little money, get more entertainment, make it easier to find the stuff that you really wanna watch. Let me know what you think of this list in the comments below. I'll meet you down there for further discussion. And again, if it's your first time here or you haven't done it yet, please do click or tap on my face at the bottom of this display in order to subscribe for free to the channel. And if you wanna be one of the first to know when a new video drops, click or tap on that notification bell icon. Thanks so much for watching as always guys, I appreciate your support. I'm Andrew Evers and I'll catch you in the next video.